What's up guys, my name is Andrew and this is Elite Gaming HQ and man it's been a while since I put a video on this channel. I figure maybe this year I'll do it a little different and I'll add some videos. I'll take a break from my motorcycles and dirt bikes off road channel and I'll do some more computer content because after all I am still building a lot of computers. So I figured the best way to kick it off will be to answer a question that I get a ton in my email and a lot of people ask me on advice on power supplies. In this video, my goal is going to be a couple things. Number one, talk to you guys how your power supply works to give you better confidence in what you're buying and what you should put in your personal PC. And then number two, tell you how to calculate the exact wattage you need to make your system safe and run really reliably. So first, you might be asking yourself, well, why do you qualify to tell me this stuff? And the answer simply is, I build 50 to 100 computers a year and I have little to no failure. And in fact, over the past five years, I don't know if any of my computers have failed for a power supply. That's a lot of computers and a lot of components, and we're able to make them healthy and run strong. And why do I build so many? Because here at Elite Gaming HQ, we build custom PCs for people in the United States to fit their budget and their gaming needs. And then we ship it to them, usually within seven business days, and are able to get a completely custom PC all the way down to what colors they want, everything. So if you are in the market for a PC and you don't feel like building yourself, check out the website. But now let's get into the information for this video. Okay, so a power supply is a very important piece of hardware. Honestly, it's probably one of the most important pieces that a lot of people like to skimp on when they're doing a budget build. And I'm here to tell you that's a terrible idea. I can actually give you a huge example right here. If you look at big companies like Cyberpower PC or iBuyPower and just go to the Better Business Bureau, you will see they have very bad reviews. This coupled with poor components and very bad customer service. And one of the things that assembly line manufacturers skimp on when building your PCs is is your power supply and if you just look at these numbers or you took the time to read some of these reviews it won't take long that you'll get the theme of how these companies work cheap power supplies can lead to whole system failures and at times it could take other components in its wake though it is very uncommon for a power supply to actually start a fire if one does go out most likely what will happen is it'll ruin your night of gaming then probably your week while you're waiting for a replacement or if you bought it from somewhere like cyber power pc months to get your pc back after they test it and put a new power supply in None of that sounds fun, so let's do it right the first time. Okay, so what does all that mean? What's a good and a bad power supply? Well, let me enlighten you. A lot of this is made easy for us by the 80 plus power rating. It's pretty easy to understand, and they made a nice chart to follow. Here's what it means. It means that percentage of load, a power supply will run efficiently at the watts it's certified at at 80%. And as you go further down the rating, that 80% increases. Now, if you have a power supply that has no rating, like this 1000 watt power supply, for example, it may only be efficient or actually be pushing 400 watts to your system despite it's saying that it's a thousand watt power supply whereas if you were to get this 550 watt 80 plus power supply you're guaranteed at least 80 percent and it will likely be more efficient than the 1000 watt power supply also keep in mind that if something's going for an 80 plus rating let's say silver gold etc you know that the components inside the power supply are of course a better quality because the manufacturer is going to use better parts to try to achieve that rating to certify their power supply. And I'm not saying everyone out there should buy a Corsair power supply. I used to think there was only four companies I really bought from and Corsair was one of them. There's actually a lot of good manufacturers out there. You just have to do your research or go with one of the tried true trusted brands. My advice when it comes to building a budget PC and you're looking at these ratings is at least what you want is an 80 plus bronze. Now I know that might sound like, oh, isn't that kind of like in the lower spectrum? Yes, but it is most of the case good enough. And in fact, if you look here, when you go up to gold, in some cases you may be spending almost double the money, but only getting 7% more efficiency. So a lot of people, when they show me their computer builds, like what they are thinking of putting in their system, that's one of the things we can trim back. Cause if the extra money means you can get more RAM or a better video card, maybe that value is better spent elsewhere. Now there is calculators you can use and one's on newegg.com but first I'll give you a quick little cheat sheet for most of the common video cards that are on the market today and show you what I recommend for a power supply for these setups with 80 plus bronze. Now this setup would be a CPU with 
not too much of an overclock, mild to none, 16 to 32 gigs of RAM, four 520 millimeter fans, and two hard drives. And you can see an, an RTX 3060, 3070, 3080, and 3090 as the power supply increases, as well as the Radeon counterparts. Oh, one thing I should mention, and I would be remiss not to tell you guys this, it is okay to go with a higher wattage power supply than what you need. So for example, if you followed my cheat sheet here, and you decided that you're getting an RTX 3070 and you went with a 750 watt power supply over a 650 watt, you're fine. You're not actually using more power. The power supply will only push the power necessary for the components that you have. You only run into trouble when you're under wattage. So one more time for an example, if you had a system running on a 600 watt power supply and let's say it's pulling 400 watts, if you put a thousand watt power supply in there and change nothing else, it will still only be using 400 watts. It will not hype your electric bill up to a thousand watts. That's just not how this works. All right, now let's go to the new egg power supply calculator. Cooler Master has one too, but this is a nice simple one and it's a pretty good guideline. All right, so as I said before, let's say a standard, let's do my PC just for fun. Okay, I have a Ryzen 9. Let's see, Threadripper's Ryzen 9. So they actually don't have mine listed. I have the Ryzen 9 3950X, but this has the 5950X, which is fine. Motherboard, I have a full ATX motherboard. Okay, let's see, it's an AMD video card. And currently I am running a 30, whoops, I'm sorry, NVIDIA video card. I actually swapped that one out and I'm running a 3060 now. I have one video card. I have 32 gigs of RAM. I have 500 to one terabyte. I actually have five drives. I have one 7200 drive. I have a six terabyte storage drive and no optimal and no optical drives, excuse me. So it's saying I only need 502 watts. Now frequently I switch out to stronger video cards and I test them and then I try to get benchmarks so I can tell, so I can tell customers that buy PCs for me exactly what to expect when they play certain games with certain setups. So in my PC, I actually have an 850 gold from Corsair, but as I mentioned before, we have a 3060 here. And if we go back to the cheat sheet, I said you only need 600 watts at 80 plus efficiency. So let's look at a standard PC when somebody has two, well, let's go down to two drives, nothing here. And you're looking at about 450 watts, 600 watts at 80 proficiency, you're pretty good. Now, once again, it doesn't really hurt to get a more powerful power supply. It's only gonna hurt your budget but you definitely don't want your power supply failing. So if you wanted to go with a 700 and it's 80 plus bronze, you'd be perfect with a setup like this. You'd be able to make any kind of video content, play basically any game that you want and really enjoy yourself doing it. Let's do one more. Let's do a very common build. And this is one that a lot of people ask for. We're gonna go with a Ryzen 5 5600X, very common chip on a ATX motherboard, 3060 again. Uh, 16 or 32 gigs. Uh, a lot of people are in that area now. Let's just keep with 32. Um, we'll say one NVMe drive and one two terabyte backup drive. And then it puts us a 418 watts. Very efficient system. And with a 600 watt power supply, you'd be completely fine. So if you have any questions at all, Put them down in the comments below. I will answer you or one of the members of the community will. And if you need a computer built, be sure to message me at EliteGamingHQ at GMX.com. And I also have a service where I work with you to get your exact components where you can get the best PC for your money and you can still build it yourself. A consultation, for example. So let me know if you need me for anything. My name is Andrew. This is Elite Gaming HQ. And I hope to see you guys in more videos as I create more content in the 2022 year. Thanks for watching guys.